the Canfield Fairgrounds. A little grit in your teeth and dirt in your hair with heavy horsepower serenading the Ohio air. We've got us a good old-fashioned monster truck race coming up next. the best in MTRA monster truck racing. From the Canfield Fairgrounds in Canfield, Ohio, it's the Canfield Monster Truck Thunder Drag. You know, you just never know what's going to come out of this guy's shop, Bob Chandler in St. Louis, Missouri. Where did Stinger come from and where's Hulkster? Well, Hulkster, WCW wants actually three bodies shown in this series. Now, we can do two, two body changes. This is our body change for the year. This, this truck will be for the rest of the season. Eric will be driving this one. So this was Hulkster with now new, new body panels. Just new body panels. The same truck, same driver, same basic name as WCW. And this is, this is the old Hulkster. That's right. So according to the rules, the driver can change trucks or names one time during the season and keep his driver points. So Eric will be in this truck the rest of the year. That's right. Well, Stinger is not the only new truck on the 10 to Point series to show up here in Canfield. Check out Bill Haslett in Super Truck 20. Now, this truck is owned by Paul Schaefer as a monster-sized version of the NASCAR Super Truck. But unfortunately, Haslett went up against Dan Ronte and Bigfoot in round one, and Super Truck 20 was trailered early. Let's check in now with my colleague, Army Armstrong. The name Dan Patrick and Samson, synonymous with a winning team. And that's exactly the way it's been. However, they have had their peaks and valleys throughout the year. As a matter of fact, last time we saw the Samson Chevrolet, he was at Bluesburg, Pennsylvania, a little bit out of shape over the second jump. Nose in on some new side. Front end of the truck collapses. Patrick fighting for control, completely demolishes the truck. We thought we wouldn't see him again for the rest of the year on the Pinda Point chase. Then, lo and behold, we come into Camfield, Ohio, and who do we see? Dan Patrick with a brand new combination here. And you're going to have to explain this from Ward 1 for me. I don't understand what's going on. Well, there was no way we could repair the truck in time to get it here. And our obligation is for all this pin to point series this year. So we opted to lease a team. You know, it's a team that's kind of been out here, but with the position we have and chasing the points and stuff, we just leased the whole team. I'm just the shoe this weekend. But, um, you know, it, I think it's going to work out pretty good for us. And then when we come back in Indianapolis, we'll have our Samson truck back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, yes, you have seen the truck before. As a matter of fact, it's running under the name of the Dungeon of Doom. This weekend... It's Samson. Top five qualifiers. Once again, Bigfoot, Dan Ruddy, no surprise. The Stinger is second. Then Barefoot, Samson, and Overkill. As we take a look now at some highlights from uh, round one competition, Kurt Dabney really looking uh, to make a good showing here at Canfield. Had the uh, girl all shined up. And as you saw, he qualified in the fifth position. Yeah, but in the first round, he was DQ'd for not hitting the second jump properly, Gary. So that takes one of the... Uh, guns out of this playoff. Dan Patrick in his monster truck uh, for rent advances into round two after a Todd Prolick in Rampage stalls on the line. Another round one competition Paul Schaefer in Monster Patrol taking on Mark Hall in the Executioner who made it to the finals in Springfield but Paul Schaefer takes out Hall on this run. And Fred Schaefer in barefoot uh, took on Mike Botters in the Black Stallion in round one. Now, he defeated Mike, but Mike would come back as the fast loser. There's the time for Fred Schaefer's barefoot. The wildest ride in round one, Alan Pizzo in the far lane against the Stinger. And his problem came in the shutdown area. Hang on, Alan. He gets his foot back in it. Nice save for Alan Pizzo. Alan, you literally just have to run them on kill, don't you? That's the only way you can run out here, Army. These guys are on kill every pass they make, and these two corporate sponsorship teams are hard to compete with. We're just out here on a limited budget and trying the best we can with what we got. 
And this is living proof of that. Nice save by Alan Pisa. We're coming back with round two competition from Canfield, Ohio. Back to the Canfield Fairgrounds here in Canfield, Ohio for the Monster Truck Thunder Drags. Gary Lee and Army Armstrong. Lane Choice wants to get Army a big factor here in Canfield. This is what the drivers are looking at in that left lane. Yeah, it's kind of looking like uh, looking down the Burma Road. You got concrete barriers, a little hill on the right. You got a down drop to the left. So everybody's got their hand full. Remember last year, Ken Deppie? Let's talk about that left lane. Look at this. Out of shape on the throttle, trying to get it squared away. If you keep one wheel touching, you can pull it back. And that's exactly what he did. Well, that was an opening night one year ago as we take a look at the round two tree, Bigfoot Predator, Boogie Van, and Barefoot Monster Patrol and Samson, and the Stinger and Black Stallion. So that lane can create a problem. There is a husband and wife, Pam and Mike Botters, in competition here uh, this weekend. As we take a look at Alan Pizzo's Predator lining up against the guy that has been just unbeatable so far this season. Well, he hasn't lost a lap all year long. That'll be Dan Rundy out of St. Louis, Missouri, driving the awesome Bigfoot truck. Pizzo had some problems in the uh, previous round trying to keep the truck straight in between the jumps. Let's see if they've been able to tighten this truck up where it will go straight. Pizzo still a little bit tight on the starting line, willied over the first jump. Bigfoot takes the win with a 4.97, and Gary, he made it look easy. Dan Patrick and Samson minus the muscle down to the bone. Now, the, the fiberglass cosmetics of this truck limit the visibility of the driver, so he's getting used to not only how little he can see out of the truck, but how the truck actually handles. Let's go trackside now to Army with Dan Runty. You know, it's strange in the past, nobody would touch that right lane, and here you're just dialed in on it. Yeah, right lane's working good for both the trucks here on the, on the Ford team. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Both these lanes are going away a little bit. We're having some problems with them. You know, it's just getting tough trying to decide which one you want to go to now. It's just a matter of playing it out and hoping Firestone tires keep biting the way they're doing. We'll go on down through there. Take a look now at uh, Paul Schaefer in Monster Patrol. He is staging against Dan Patrick and the Samson truck. Now, Schaefer is uh, really making some moves this year. He's settled down. He's constantly running in the four-second bracket. Dan Patrick has been around the sport of monster trucks and pulling for many, many years, driving the Renner Racer team tonight. Uh, Schaefer, a uh, salvage operator out of northern Indiana, been around all year long chasing the points, but let's see if he's found the combination he's been looking for. Paul Schaefer against Dan Patrick. Patrick made a good move. Schaefer trying to muscle him. Oh, a good run, but I think it was it was that green and black truck. Paul Schaefer takes the victory by just about two feet at a 520 ET. 520 is a good number. The replay is going to show you that the uh, Bone truck made the move first. Well, why Schaefer settle down right now and start really putting horsepower to work? Well, right now it was side by side, but there you can see the margin of victory just by about a wheel. Let's go down trackside and visit with Paul Schaefer. Paul, a real close race, but a 5-2-0 wins it for you out of that left lane. Well, I got the van in his race engine motor running pretty good, and uh, the Spitfire is working good for me, and uh, I hope to go one more time. These guys are getting good about getting all those sponsors mentioned. They've been watching Kenny Bernstein on the drag race series. He's the best. Uh, here's a crowd favorite already. Brand of the circuit, the Stinger truck. Eric Meager on board, part of the uh, Bigfoot organization. Now remember, the points stay with the frame and the driver. The body's just cosmetic here. This is a truck we saw earlier in the year as the Hulkster. Meanwhile, Botter's in the far lane. And this is an R&D session, and whatever he was trying didn't work is the sting stung, Gary. Eric Meager, a 5-0-2 in the WCW Stinger. As Bob Chandler uh, checking out the Bigfoot truck, we'll come back and visit with Eric Meager when we return to Canfield. Canfield, Ohio, the northeastern portion of the state for the monster truck Thunder Drags. And... Uh, Eric Meager was just victorious. Let's go down trackside and visit with the driver of Stinger. If there was ever a run 
where the chassis looked perfect, that was it. The first jump didn't look like it came off the ground at all. That's right, Army. We've been doing a lot of work here. Uh, we're trying to get the truck dialed in. We came out qualifying. I believe we qualified second. That pass felt really smooth. These guys are making the adjustments as we go. So far, everything seems to be working real well. Round two continues our final matchup with uh, Fred Schaefer in Barefoot the Dodge against Pam Botters, the Ford Boogie Van. There's a look at Fred Schaefer out of Pontoon Beach, Illinois, over in the uh, St. Louis area. He'll be going up against a Maryland-based team, the wife of the husband and wife team, Pam Botters, uh, has proven that she can drive the truck. She has worked awfully, awfully hard, earned a lot of respect to the uh, guy drivers, if you will. She's just a racer. Not a girl out there. The name of the vehicle she drives is called the Boogie Van. Schaefer knows he's going to have to cut a light on this girl. And she will be dead on that tree. Oh, yeah. We got a race. Well, Fred took her, though, in no man's land. He got the horsepower down to the uh, ground, a 523. Rolled over that first jump, and the rear wheel just literally powered his way through. Watch it how... Front end, it's a four-wheel drive vehicle. You only get half the power to the ground starting right now. Look at this. Big wheel stand, but he had enough power from the rear wheels as the front end settles down to uh, take the victory. So he will advance to round two. Fred Schaefer in barefoot at a pontoon beach, Illinois. Here's Fred with Army. Fred, did you ever think there'd be such a thing as enduro monster truck racing? Army, uh, I'm, I'm about game for anything right now. Does that break your train of thought when something like this happens? Does it get you out of rhythm? Yeah, it does. And uh, it, you see the truck wheelie that time, and it hadn't, hadn't wheelied so far this evening, so uh, now I'm worried about a wheelie now in the next round. Look at the semifinal tree. You see the pairings there. It is Ford against Dodge and Chevrolet against Ford as we're down to the final four here in Canfield. The first pairing will have Eric Meager against Paul Schaefer. Now, some people tell you that's a stinger, but our crew chief tells us that's the flying croissant body style if you look at the back <laughs> of this thing. You can't argue the logic with you there. Meanwhile, on the back of this one, you got a big old tall wing, and Paul Schaefer says really the wing is functional. It helps to stabilize the truck as they jump in the air. you got to remember, they're jumping 20 and 30 feet in the air on each of these runs. Four to the left, Chevrolet to the right. And the winner will go to the finals here in Canfield under the lights. One of the larger fairgrounds in the country, boasting one of the largest county fairs in the country. And a lot of good street rod shows up in this part of the country. A lot of hot rodders up here. This is Ohio. What do you expect? There's your Chevrolet, and there is your Ford. So what we're doing, we're working late into the night. These guys run alcohol for fuel, so nobody's in a hurry to get to the line because the longer you run the motor, you're going to get a little bit more heat in it. More heat makes more horsepower. Then you race. Just that like that. All Stinger, all Eric Meager, so one four now in the final. And if history uh, can be read, it would uh, indicate that the other four should also be in the final. You're exactly right, Gary. And remember, the win here came out of the lane that all the drivers have said with the bad lane. That's the one that's got the drop off to the right. Coming right at you, and you can see it was the whole shot for Eric Meager. Look at the difference in altitude there with the Ford in the left lane, the far side. And let's go down and visit with Eric now. Here's Army. I got one thing to say to you. That was a perfect tree. Oh, exactly. I knew as soon as, as, soon as I took off, I knew it was going to be close. I really wasn't looking for the red light. I wanted, wanted to really stay with it all the way down through there, get a quick ET for that final round. I actually had to lift a little bit, so I know the time doesn't reflect it, but, man, was it a good light or what? <laughs> I think he's a happy uh, camper with that run. As we take a look at his teammate, there's Dan Runte in the undefeatable Bigfoot Ford. And look what lane Runte's in. He picks the right lane, too. He'll be going up against Schaefer in the left lane. The left lane, there's poles over there. The right lane, there's drop-offs over here. This is not going to be an easy win. Look who's watching. The entire Bigfoot crew standing outside Schaefer, their hauler. Schaefer was worried about William. The air is cooler. If anything, he'll make more horsepower. That could be a definite problem for him if they did not tighten that truck up. is going to be his downfall as the big blue Ford will go up against that driver right there for the championship here in Canfield. A 495 for Dan Runte. 
and a big wheelie. Here it is again, the far lane. Watch the big red barefoot dodge, and that is the wheelie that Fred was concerned with. Yeah, it did exactly what he did not want it to do. Not only wheelie, it bounced off of the rear wheels when he got up. That's how high it went, Gary. So it's going to be an all forward final from the Bigfoot stable. Dan Runty, now watch how smooth the old pro is. Now the question I have is who's going to get the run in this lane in the final because both winners for the final came out of the lane. And remember, the guys were saying, this is the bad lane. I don't believe it, Gary. Well, I think that Runty had the fastest time, so he should get lane choice. Should make for an interesting final here in Canfield. Let's go down and talk to Dan Runty. Starting line either pays dividend or bankruption this for, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You know, it's got to go out there and cut a good light. These guys are all running tough. If you don't go out there and do it, it's going to bite you, you know. I don't know if Fred went out there. I don't really know what happened. It's another thing. You don't have a whole lot of time to pay attention. We're keeping it together. We put the two Fords in the finals, and we're going to see what comes out of this one. Well, a crowd pleaser here will be the tough truck competition. We'll have some highlights when we come back to Canfield, Ohio. final. Both boards, but who's going to the right? We'll find out in just a second. And can Eric Meager finally do something no one else has done all season long? Knock out Dan Runte. The Canfield Monster Thunder Drags, like the four-wheel jamborees, are part of the special events performance series. They offer a weekend of four-wheel fun. Visit the manufacturer's midway. There's also several categories of show and shine competition. To find out when a jamboree or a monster drag will be in your area, Contact the special events promotion company and take part in all the action. All right, it's Dan Runte against Eric Meager, Ford against Ford. Look at that. Meager gets the right lane. I wonder if that was his choice or did uh, Runte want that left lane? I don't, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. These guys will play some poker with you here about what's good and what's bad, but right now, only the strong survive. The flying croissant in one lane and the blue bandit in the other one, if you will. And once oh. again, Runty has yet to be defeated in any round of competition this season. For the whole year, yeah, nobody's beat him yet. But this is the guy that could do it yeah. right here. Whoa, Runty's out like a rocket. And Runty continues that incredible win streak. Man. Runty takes the victory in that left lane of 491. Dominance is a not a good enough word for what that truck is doing to this sport. Well, take a look now at the uh, far lane. A great light. I mean, Dan Runty cut a terrific light. And he kept the momentum up, and he takes the victory. Once again, Dan running in victory lane. He's with Army. Dan, eight in a row, you know, just... This has got to be the most awesome thing in motorsports that's happened in many years. It's an awesome team, Army. The Fords are running good this year. Third time in, third time in eight races, got thrown in a bad lane. It's got to say something for the truck. Firestone's helped us out. Blower Drive Service, MSD Ignition, a bunch of great sponsors have been behind us. I mean, we can't thank those enough for that.